Hi everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you stopped by and uh, click the like button and prescri prescribe. <laughs> Subscribe if you wish <laughs> and I thank you so much and I want to thank uh, my subscribers I already have. It's just awesome. Thank you so much. Now this uh, is about Senator Bernie Sanders and uh, I like Bernie and I think a lot of other people do too. Uh, he, he seems to be for us trying to help us to get help and um, I was kind of glad to see this possibly if he might but we'll see. Senator Bernie Sanders has said that he is not yet sure whether he would make another bid for the White House. During an interview with CBS Morning, Sanders said that he has not yet decided, as it was a big decision to make. Yes, it is a humongous de decision to make to become the President of the United States of America. Sanders, an independent, has his first presidential campaign as a Democrat in the 2016 general election. That year, he lost the party nomination to Hillary Clinton. In the following election cycle, 2020, he suspended his campaign in favor of now President Biden. Currently, he has said that his priority, traveling across the country and helping young progressives get elected. When asked about whether he thought Biden would try for re-election, Sanders said that that's his decision. He has also responded to some of the claims and concerns being made regarding the age of elected officials as Biden's age appears to have become a big point of conversation, especially in regards to the possible 2024 bid. Recent polls have also shown that many believe that there should be an age limit for politicians. To this, Sanders said that everyone is completely different, and you need to look at the individual. He said that instead of focusing on gender, race, or age, we should focus on their views, whether we agree with them. Finally, he said, you always want to have people who are competent and have the energy, but you should also be looking into what they stand for. Very wise words very wise but I do like Bernie Sanders yes I do all right let's see what else I've got lined up here oh I'll tell you this makes me really really sad yes it does that hurricane was devastating just absolutely devastating. I got to move my stuff around here, people. Hang on, I'll get there. You know how I work. Not the best ways, but I do the best I can. Hopefully with uh, time, I will get better. But I'm a right-hander, and I gotta have the cam on the right side. <laughs> it sounds petty, don't it? But it just works better for me that way, for me to get to the articles. But I've got a picture here, and uh, of that uh, part of the scenery. Hurricane Ian made landfall on Wednesday afternoon, causing over one million. Power outages for Floridians. Floridians. According to the National Hurricane Center, the effects of Ian would be on a catastrophic level with winds, flooding, and storm surge expected to devastate Florida. And it did just that. My prayers, my heart goes out to each and every one of them involved in that devastating hurricane. 
I saw pictures of cars floating on their side. Houses. Oh, I can't imagine being involved in something like that. Oh, my goodness. Early Wednesday morning, there had only been 35 power outages. And just hours later, the number reached seven figures, with the majority of outages occurring in Sarasota, Collier, and Lee counties. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis urged Floridians to prepare for the worst. If you are in any of those counties, it's no longer possible to safely evacuate. Oh my God, said DeSantis. It's time to hunker down and prepare for this storm. Oh my God, how would you prepare for something that happened to them? How would you do that? This is going to be a nasty, nasty day. Two days, he warned. This is going to be a rough stretch. On Wednesday, the storm winds had reached 155 miles per hour as the storm neared Naples, Florida. Ian made landfall as a Category 4 hurricane, just short of being classified as a Category 5, before weakening to a Category 3. The eye of the hurricane initially made landfall at 3.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time near K.O. Costa State Park. I hope I pronounced that right. It's K-A-Y-O Costa State Park, north of Sanibel and Cativia Islands. Eighteen years ago, Hurricane Charlie made landfall in the same location. State Division Emergency Management Director Kevin Guthrie cautioned citizens about being deceived by the eye of the storm. You're most likely to have a bright, sunshiny area here very soon, explained Guthrie. You're in the eye of the storm. Oh my God. I can't imagine. Stay inside, stay indoors, said Guthrie. Do not go outside. That eye wall will collapse, so please stay safe. And you still might get floated away? Oh, dear Lord. In addition to the threats of tornadoes, officials are concerned about the likelihood of flash floods. Flooding of rivers, creeks, streams, and other low-lying and flood-prone locations is intimate or occurring, stated the National Weather Service in a flood warning issued Wednesday afternoon. DeSantis expressed his ap appreciation to the Biden administration for responding in this time of need. We have everything we need in terms of the immediate response needs, but there will be thousands of Floridians who will need help rebuilding, he said. Yeah, because some of those people, you know, didn't have insurance. How are they going to afford to rebuild anything with no, no flood insurance? There'll be no help rebuilding their homes, their livelihood. Mm. DeSantis detailed the state officials are ready to help Florida recover once the storm passes with 250 aircrafts, 1 point or 1,600 high water vehicles, and more than 300 boats waiting to be put to use. And the devastation, I saw the numbers today of those that did not make it through. It broke my heart. Them storms, I, I, I just don't understand. Those hurricanes, how they come about, what devastation they can cause. It's just unbelievable to me until you see the pictures. Pictures don't lie. My goodness. Devastation all over. My heart goes out to those people.
absolutely horrifying. Well, I'm going to go to this article here. And again, dear Lord, pray for those poor Floridians. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, this one here kind of got me. But here we go. Top Rep Republican now working for Democrats. Representative Liz Cheney, Republican Wyoming, the outgoing Congress, Congresswoman who has been incredibly critical of former President Trump in the last year has said that she was willing to campaign in favor of the Democrats in the upcoming midterm elections during an event at the Texas Tribune Festival in Austin. She said that she would be open to boosting Democrat candidates even if it meant crossing party lines. Cheney has been a lifelong Republican, has recently been overly critical of the GOP and its candidates. This has become increasingly apparent following her vote to impeach Trump for his role in the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol. Cheney was only one of the 10 Republicans to have voted in favor of impeachment. She is now one of the two Republicans sitting in the House Select Committee in charge of investigating the January 6th Capitol attack. Due to these decisions, she lost her chance at keeping her House seat as she lost the Republican primary to Harriet Hageman, a Trump-backed attorney. Hageman repeatedly blasted Cheney for his, her disloyalty to Trump. In contrast, Cheney throughout her primary campaign played up the fact that she was Trump's primary opposition. Cheney also said that she would do everything she can to ensure that Carrie Lake, the GOP nominee for Arizona governor, does not manage to win in November. What an attitude! Cheney also has also noted that the party needs to stop being accommodating to former President Donald Trump. My goodness. Why are you worried about the papers that a president has in his possession when all the presidents have the same? President Obama admitted he has his papers and he's making a library. Nobody questioned him. The Clintons took more than papers. They took priceless items. Did you object to that? Is it because he is a Republican? I object to Democrats questioning everything that this great president does simply because he's a Republican. Shame on you. I agree with that person. Totally and completely agree with that person. My goodness. So many backstabbers in that Congress. Would you want to be in Congress? Not me. Cut throats? Holy crap. God. Well, here's another one. And let's move the camera back over where it belongs. And I'll get through this article. And it's California Democrats refuse to debate. This is a shorty. With midterm elections just weeks away, California voters will see plenty of Democrat television ads, hear multiple Democrats during public speaking engagements, experience zero debates between Democratic candidates and the Republican counterparts. Leahy Sheen, C H E N, Shin. Leahy Shin, GOP controller candidate, has been calling out incumbent, incumbent Malaya Cohan, M-A-L-I-A, -A, Malaya Cohan, constantly over the past few weeks and months, almost begging for public debate. Shin, at one point, even began doing the chicken dance to hit home his point. I remember that chicken dance, remember that? <laughs> yeah, Senator 
State Senator Brian Dahl, D-A-H-L-E, is running a campaign to try and unseat Newsom as governor of the state. While his attempt is probably doomed to failure, especially as a Republican in California, Newsom will not even meet him for one debate. Likewise, GOP Attorney General candidate Nathan Hochman, Hochman cannot convince Democratic incumbent Rob Bonta to debate him after calling for a minimum of three leading up to the election. Nat Bonta, B-O-N-T-A, Rob Bonta, to debate him. These three races have one thing in common with every big statewide race in California. The Democratic nominee refuses to publicly, publicly debate the Republicans. Newsom claims that this tweet that the Republicans are attacking the fundamental rights of Americans, claiming California is the antidote as they lead to compassion and by defending democracy. Those things, however, do not jive with the fact that not one single candidate will debate the most important topics of the day with the people they are running against. Conventional wisdom and politics say that if you are already ahead, do not do anything that might lessen or take away the lead. These Democrat candidates seem to be scared of just that. In reality, with the state of California, even the worst performance imaginable by any of the candidates would probably lead to a Democrat winning. This is how politics have been in the state for many years. Even if they were to lose a debate, at least they would have faced their competition head on. But the way things are going right now, <laughs> that is very unlikely to happen. The fact that Democrats will not even debate shows the d direction politics continues to go in, especially with Cohen's campaign stating, Cohen, C-O-H-E-N, Cohen, doesn't take orders from the Republican operatives who put Trump in power and have now placed their bets on Lan He Sheen. C H E N Shin Sheen Shin. Oh my goodness! One thing after another, people. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Just as long as it's for the people and the United States of America. Let the best ones win and get us back on our feet. I'll be back. Gonna look up some more articles, people. God bless. <laughs>